Time for Radio Mystery Theater. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. Today, the door to Mystery Theater opens on a tomb of the past that has been sealed for 3,000 years. A life of splendor and misery undreamt of today. The pharaohs and their queens drinking from jewel-encrusted golden cups while the poor warm themselves at camel dung fires. A life of contrasts, of mile-wide temples along the Nile of jackals digging at graves in the desert, of love and treachery, of an extraordinary people, the ancient Egyptians. Mother, I know it's been arranged for me to marry Nefertiti, but why can't I wait for one year before I take a wife? Because it has been arranged. You will be crowned pharaoh and marry the same day. Nefertiti frightens me. She... she hates me. She despises me. Mother, she won't make a good queen. Oh, yes, she will. She'll make a pharaoh of you. Our drama, The Vulture Screams, based on facts and the findings of archaeologists, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by G. Frederick Lewis and stars Tammy Grimes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. fascinates me that here we are today, one foot on Earth and the other on the moon, in Mars or Venus. Satellites spin off in orbit. Space shuttles are poised for takeoff to far-off planets. And yet, what truly captures our imagination and interest these days? Life in Egypt, thousands of years before Christ. So, let me step aside and yield the microphone to the most beautiful woman who ever lived. Her name, Nefertiti. A name, by the way, that actually means Behold, the beautiful woman. It was a day I'll never forget. I was 19. My father, the prime minister, was at the bedside of the great pharaoh himself, Amenhotep. He was dying. Ironical in a way, because just the day before... I had been told of the great honor I was to receive. I was to be married to the pharaoh's son, Akhenaten. Not my choice for a husband, really. But in a few hours, he'd be the king. And I ask anyone, who in their right mind would turn down a chance to marry a king? Let alone the king of the greatest land in the universe, Egypt. Wife, queen... I am dying. Bring the gods closer where I can see them from my bed. It shall be done, my pharaoh. Priest, light the tapers and bring your masks, signifying our gods, closer to his majesty's bedside. You first, Horus, with the falcon face. Then you, Sekhmet, heart woman, heart lion. I cannot see them. Light more tapers. They are here, husband. All around your bed. Where is my prime minister? I. Here, O Pharaoh. My time has come. Where is Akinasid, my son? I will fetch him. He is in his chambers. Wife, let us begin the ritual. The last words. I smile at death. I smile at death. Death is in my mind today, like the fragrance of myrrh, like seated in shelter on a windy day. Like seated in shelter on a windy day. Death is in my mind today, like the longing of a man for his home when he has passed long years in captivity. Father, father. Father, dearest Pharaoh, do not leave us. 
My son, the minutes leave me. Wife, Queen Tai. Yes, husband. Bring the mask gods nearer. <laughs> Have them bend over me. I must touch them. Sobek the crocodile. <laughs> Thoth the baboon. Oh, don't, please. They, don't, those animals, they, they frighten me. Uh, frighten? <laughs> Masks of our divinity. Be not afraid. I am joining them. Animals and snakes, monkeys, dogs, and hawks. I, I cannot look at them. Please, Father, let me go. My son, <laughs> these are our gods who will conduct your father to the other world. I can't look. They're horrible. Son, you will inherit the kingdom of Egypt before the hour is spent. I turn your head up. Look at them. Foolish boy. They are but masks. I want to see no weakness, I can answer. No cowardice. I take him away. Our son has disgraced himself. My, my dear Prime Minister, these last six hours since the Pharaoh died have been the longest in my life. No one must know what really happened at the Pharaoh's deathbed. Least of all your daughter, Nefertiti. I am so ashamed. No one shall, my queen. I pray my dearest husband will spare that sight. Horrible. His trembling, quaking son. The Pharaoh's eyes and ears were already closed. Now your son, Akhenaten, will step into the royal shoes. It grieves me. I ask myself... Is my son ready for the throne? Akhenaten is weak at a time when the two lands of Egypt need strength. You speak as if Thebes were surrounded by enemies. No, oh, they're vassal states now. But if the heart of Egypt falters, you will see how quickly the arms and legs will not obey. I see revolt everywhere. What is this sickness in my son's head? To turn away from animals and birds to weep like a woman. He is but nineteen. As he grows, my queen, he will find his path. He will find strength in Nefertiti. I hope so. I pray so. Yes, your daughter Nefertiti will bring energy and endurance. The sooner your daughter and my son are united, the sooner may Egypt inherit an heir. Not may inherit, but shall. No time will be wasted. The coronation of your son, Akhenaten, and his wedding to Nefertiti will be on the same day. Ow! Oh, what are you doing to me, Mariani? That hurt. Nefertiti, I'm sorry. But it's your own fault. How can you expect me to paint your toenails if you keep wiggling about like a captured lizard? Oh, still. Isn't it a beautiful day? Sitting out here in my terrace. Overlooking Thebes and the River Nile. Mm. I think I'd rather be me than anyone else in Egypt. Now tell me about yesterday. And how you know who beheaded. The king was saying the last word of the ritual. It goes, death is as when a man grasps suddenly what he has not understood. That is so clear to me. That just before death, you suddenly understand everything. And then, is that when it happened? Yes, I think so. Uh, according to one of the mourners. Is it really true Prince Akhenaten fell into a fit and frothed at the mouth? Well, I didn't see it myself. Akhenaten is such a baby. He always was. Even when we were children playing together. Nefertiti, I speak to you as a sister. Don't believe everything you hear. You don't think Akhenaten became hysterical and had to be led away from the bed of death? He could have. But no one knows. It's only gossip. Oh. There. The toenails are done. How do they look? Oh, Nefertiti, you don't even care. I wish I knew Akhenaten better. I've seen so little of him in the last few years. Do you think it's possible, Mariani, for people to change? Yes, I do, Nefertiti. It's the world outside that won't let you change. But I must believe you can change yourself, if you will. Do you think Akhenaten has strength where maybe it doesn't show? 
Is that possible, Mariani? Of course it is. For me, when I marry, I'd rather find someone who has strength that does show. When you marry, I hope you will have a choice. Akhnaten. Akhnaten, it's time to be up. The peacocks are already sunning themselves in the courtyard. Are you asleep? No, Mother. Then why didn't you answer me? I was hoping you'd go away. Last night, I was discussing you with the Prime Minister. Oh, not now, Mother. Can't it wait for another time? I... I feel so wretched. Son, stop that. We all feel sad. The world is empty here today without your father. You're... You're not ashamed of me? Oh, my darling boy. I hope that when you're married and wear the robes of the pharaoh, these childish fears will disappear. I would that they could. Look at it sensibly. Why do we make these creatures our gods? They have qualities we humans do not. The falcon can fly. No mortal is as strong as a lion or as swift as a jaguar. These are not to be feared, but worshipped. When is the coronation? Very soon. You spoke of marriage to Nefertiti. Yes, it is arranged. Could I be pharaoh for one year before I take a wife? No, son. But my father was king without a queen for ten years. He was at war. He needed only soldiers. You need a wife. Nefertiti frightens me. She, she won't make a good queen. Oh, yes, she will. She'll make a pharaoh of you. Mother, she hates me. She, she despises me. When we were little, she always made fun of me. What, what do we have in common? The throne of Egypt. You must not be afraid of her. You must fear nothing. To be an Egyptian in these times is the highest form of man. We and our gods control everything. Here and in the hereafter. There is nothing to fear. You think so? Poor mother. I am afraid. Because I know how little I know. I'm ignorant. We are all ignorant. Nefertiti will make all the difference in your life. I'll do it for Egypt. But I wish you'd chosen me another bride. You don't know her. She has many wonderful qualities. Oh, to be sure. She can pierce a target with an arrow at a hundred yards. She can run quicker than an antelope. She's crossed the Nile in the water faster than a fish could swim. Oh, yes, Mother. I look forward to taking to bed a huntress, a runner, a wife of muscle, not mine. Have you ever talked to Nefertiti? Talked? About what? Could she answer one question of the spirit? Perhaps her questions are the same as yours. Akhnaten, I want you to get up and get dressed now. Face her with your questions, son, and then pray to Osiris for the answers. Face Nefertiti? I can hardly face the morning. Oh, don't be stupid. And don't try my patience. You will marry whom I say, and you will do as I say. And what if I will not? Your grandfather refused to go to war. He died. Your uncle mocked his father. He also died, mysteriously. My very own brother disobeyed his father and was found dead. They all died suddenly? They were all poisoned. Akhnaten, although you are my only son, if you do not obey and do what is best for Egypt, I would not hesitate to kill you with my own hands. <laughs> What was commonplace in a civilization thousands of years ago may seem incredible to us today. Yet, in spite of primitive beliefs, bizarre codes of conduct, marriage within families, some of the world's finest poetry and art was created by the early Egyptians. Evidence of their treasures, their talents, are on view everywhere today. But it was in their games with death that the Egyptians reached their most original glory. More when I return shortly with Act Two. The ancient Egyptians were taught from childhood they were born with a soul, a spirit, or ka, which would survive physical death. Indeed, many people believe that today. But an Egyptian could only live in the hereafter if the body was preserved from corruption and the Ka provided with food and all the appurtenances of earthly life. Not only jewelry, chariots, furniture, and clothing, but if you were a pharaoh, servants as well. 
There is no other way, daughter. All those who have prepared the house of life for the deceased king must be put to death. The excavators, the carpenters, the painters, goldsmiths, all the artisans and workmen, they too must be buried around the tomb. But that is terrible, Fuck. Is it so that no one will tell where the pharaoh is buried? Where the tombs are hidden? So that no one will rob the graves? Partly, Nefertiti. It's a waste of time and lives. Grave robbing goes on all the time. And we know, and we try to stop it. Anyone caught is put to death and strung up as an example. Death, death. Too much thinking about death. You don't understand at all. A pharaoh who dies becomes a god. I suppose when you're queen of Egypt, you'll put a stop to the killing of the pharaoh's hundred servants who are also buried with him. That's wicked. As if the king and his court would all go to the eternal world together and his servants wait on him through eternal life. It's wicked. This is not the conversation I wish to have with my daughter the morning of her wedding. Where is the queen? She promised to be here and help me to get ready. I have a thousand things to do. Goodbye, father. And if you see my husband-to-be, tell him to be sure to be ready on time. Akhenaten is always late. He'll miss his own funeral. I hope you meant wedding. Yes, I did. Of course. If there's anything I loathe, it's having to stand still and be fitted by the court tailor. Your, your Highness, please, if you would kindly not move. Now, the royal robe must fit properly. I wish you'd hurry. I really am not feeling too well. Taylor, help me to my bed. I must lie down. Oh, I'll never have this robe done in time. You don't understand. I feel sick. Everything is rising about me. Well, you, 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 what is it? My insides. I think I've been poisoned. Good morning, my dear Nefertiti. It's the big day. Oh, Mother Time, I'm so glad you came. I've got butterflies in my stomach. Are all brides as nervous as I am? Oh, yes, I was. <laughs> I brought you some special lotus perfume. Queen Chai, Queen Chai, the prince. Oh, oh, excuse me, princess. Forgive me for bursting in on you like this, but I, I simply had to find the queen. What's the matter, Taylor? The prince, Akhenaten, he's very ill. I knew it. I was fitting him for the coronation robe and he fell over. He says he's been poisoned. I had better go to him at once. Don't worry, Nefertiti. I'm sure it's some little indisposition. No, let me go to him by myself, alone, Queen Tai. What? See your groom in the morning of the wedding? That's evil luck. But if Akhenaten dies before we are married, that's not such good luck either, is it? Akhenaten, I've come to take care of you. Lie still. I'm really important to you, am I? Of course you are. The moment I heard you were ill, I came right over. This is stupid, isn't it, today of all days? You'll laugh, but I... I thought you disliked me. It's not you, Akhenaten. It's weakness I dislike. Have I always been that way? Yes, you have. Even when we were younger. Do you remember we used to play with Hor and Rap? Hor and Rap? The tailor's son. Remember that time the three of us saw an overseer whipping a slave? I think so. They were carrying granite for the pharaoh's statues, and he kept whipping them. We had a little army. Horan Rab was always the general, and we were his soldiers. Remember? Oh, oh the latest come over there. Look at him, whipping those unfortunate army. Get your slingshots ready. I told yes, you, General Horan Rab. Are you ready also, Private Akhenaten? Yes, General. Now, wait till the overseer gets a little closer, and then take careful aim. Here, here's a good babble. You first, Private Nefferty. Are you ready? Ready, General. Ready? Aim. Fire. I'm sorry, General. I missed. All right, Eunice, Private Akhenaten. Here's your stone. You ready? Uh, aim. Fire. Go uh, on, I said fire. I can't. I, I, I'm afraid. Oh, what kind of an army is this? It's my turn, then. I'll get him right in the back of the neck. You hit the slave driver, General. I'm next. You hit him in the head. Oh, here he comes. Stand your ground. Who told grasshoppers? Who was it? Who hit me? You shouldn't whip those men. It's cruel. Ah, two boys and a girl. 
I, I, I didn't. Come forward! I, I, I didn't hit you. Uh, Whooping is not the way to get men to work for you. I give you one more chance. Who was it? It, it was my stone. Both of them. Ah, a brave little beetle. See how you like this. Uh, you've cut his face. He's bleeding. Horn Rob, you're hurt. Stop. What are you doing, overseer? Give me that whip. Uh, Prime Minister, uh, they, 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 they attacked me. Do you know to whom you're raising your hand? This is my daughter, Nefertiti. And the lad behind her is the Pharaoh's son, Akhenaten. Oh, most royal prime minister, I, I beseech you, I did not know. Your name? Zanaza, your grace. Go home and put your house in order. Inform your wife that before nightfall she will be widowed. Leave. You, lad. Who are you? Horan Rab? Oh, yes, the son of the tailor. The next time I find you near the palace, I shall make you regret it the rest of your life. Go home. He's bleeding, Father. His face is cut open. Did you hear me, you dirty boy? Get away from here. General Hornrab, I kiss away your cut so it will heal. I'll never forget you. Disgraceful. A daughter of mine kissing the cheek of that young horror? I don't care. He's very brave. Braver than him. He is the son of the pharaoh, and you must respect him. Is that why? Because he's a prince? Of royal blood. And I, a prime minister, am only a commoner. And so are you, daughter. Oh, he makes me sick. I will not have you growing up a tomboy, playing with stones and slingshots and riprap. Like this horn rab, the tailor's boy. It is not befitting the future queen. Do you remember, Akhenaten? Do you remember? Do you think I'm still that afraid? That I haven't changed? I don't know. What happens to you when there is something you don't want to face? You ever fit when your father is dying? You should be ashamed. Never, Titi. You have no idea how terrifying those masks of animals are. I, I, I couldn't help it. And today, a few hours before you are to be crowned the pharaoh of all Egypt, and we had to be married, you turn green, and your servant comes running, saying you were poisoned. Oh, I thought I was. My, my stomach pained so. My arms and legs felt like they were going to drop off. But poisoned. No one is going to harm you except yourself. You must not let your mind poison you. You have a duty to Egypt, and that is to be brave. Always. Do you understand? Nefertiti? I think you really do care for me. You're right. I think I do. Then I think I shall get up and get married. Nefertiti, is that you? Yes, I'm back, Queen Mother. He's all right. Only his imagination was poison. Hmm. Is he ready for the ceremony? He will be. Akhenaten is a good boy. A boy. That's pretty much how I feel about him. He needs you. I'll do my best. But you must promise me to be always close at hand until I learn how to be a queen. It is not difficult. The important thing to remember, child, is that the pharaoh always comes first. That is foremost. They really make the first rule the most difficult, don't they? Hello, my precious Mew Mew. Isn't he a beautiful kitten, Mother? You have no time to play with pets. Sure. <laughs> now you've made him run away and hide. We were talking about how to be a queen, Nefertiti. Now stand up. Let's see how the drape falls. I think I have a long neck. Does the dress hide it? Oh, perfectly, child. Akhenaten will be very proud of you. If I can only make him see what I see and feel what I feel. Ah, oh, Mariani, let me see the covering robe. Mew Mew, where are you? This lapis is sewn on sideways. Now, who is responsible for that? Bring me a needle and gold and silver thread. Mew Mew! Here, Mew Mew! What are you doing, child, crawling on the ground? Now, stop it and get up. You'll ruin the dress. Mariani, have you seen my kitten? I think he ran out the door, madame. I'll go find him myself. 
Oh. I believe this is your kitten, Princess. It is. It is. Thank you, soldier. You're welcome, Princess. Don't we... Don't we know each other? Yes. We have met before. A long time ago. In the palace? Outside. In those days, I was not permitted in here. I remember now. An overseer struck you with a whip. Oh, yes. You took the last for me. You are Horenrath. I am, Princess. <laughs> Horenrath. Are you a general? Not yet. I am a captain of the guards. Goodbye. Happy omens to you, Queen Nefertiti. Bye. I see you found your kitten. Now to sew this lapis lazuli on tropic. What is it, Nefertiti? Are you all right? You look as if you'd seen a ghost. Mother Ty, I think I am growing up. <laughs> The worship and the fear of animals is not difficult to understand if you bear in mind that the ancient Egyptians were more than 3,000 years closer to uncivilized man than we are. The hawk in the sky, the cry of the desert jaguar, the roar of the lion were fearsome in those days. Nefertiti, however, was a 21st century woman. How she will reconcile her modern spirit to her own time we shall see when I return shortly with Act Three. Archaeologists who have searched the length of the Nile tell us that this was a civilization throbbing with life. Hours away is the coronation of the new pharaoh, Akhenaten, and his marriage to Nefertiti. But it is not always those who wear the crown who have the power. In ancient as in modern history, look not at the kings, but the king-makers. And in those days of the 14th century B.C., who wields the power? You look very well in those robes, Akhenaten. If you'll please stand here at the foot of the throne steps, I will tie these royal chin whiskers to your face. My... <laughs> How often I've seen my father wearing these. Ooh, they're a bit stiff because they're made of gold. Yeah, I'll tie them with this strap around the back of your neck. Now, during the ceremony, whatever you do, don't move a muscle. Don't laugh. But why should I laugh? And don't frown either, my boy. The straps are a bit short, and if you move too much, the chin whiskers may fall off. Look at you, Akhenat. Oh, I love those whiskers. Are they heavy? It, it's hollow, Hollow beaten gold. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly makes you talk funny. <laughs> Nefertiti, stop tormenting Akhenaten. You know those chin whiskers are part of the ritual. He looks ridiculous. Uh, Nefertiti, you are too stupid to understand the significance of our heritage. Now, Your Highness Akhenaten, I hand you this crook and this flail. Cross them against your chest. With that crook and the funny gold whiskers. You look like a goat pretending to be a shepherd. Mother! He's only teasing you, son. Now turn round. You turn round with him, Nefertiti. I isn't she a picture? The gold gauze dress and the lapis lazuli and carnelian at her throat. I'm very proud of your daughter. That's the warning bell. The procession to the coronation will begin very soon. I'm not teasing, Queen Ty. Why do we today still have to go through all these primitive rites? We'll talk about that later. I do we go from the temple of Karnak to the lotus shrine for the wedding? Yes, Your Highness. After the coronation, the wedding, I shall tell the priests we are ready. There isn't going to be any wedding. I'll be crowned pharaoh, and that is all. No wedding. Why are you getting so angry? I am not going to stand here being mocked by this creature. Take it out of my sight. Don't. Oh, look what you've made me do. Those tin whiskers have fallen on the floor, probably bent all out of shape. I'm sorry if I made you so nervous, darling. <laughs> but now that I look at you, dear husband-to-be, I admit I was wrong. Oh. You do look much better with your face hidden behind that golden bush. Get her out of here. The marriage is off. Off! Of course, the marriage wasn't off. 
It went without a hitch, as did the coronation. It rankled me that in all the processions from the crowning to the wedding, I had to walk behind Akhenat. Right when I vowed to myself that in all other ways I would be his equal. The banquet at the festival hall was attended by all those of noble birth, the holy men, and those who labored in the palace. We sat high up on a platform, and there were mountains of food as far as the eye could see. Everyone seems to be enjoying themselves. From up here, they all look like so many dwarfs. <laughs> I am thirsty, wife. I strained this cup of pomegranate wine for you. Thank you. I exist only for the pleasure of the Pharaoh. Well. His bidding is my desire. Hmm. <laughs> We are pleased with our royal wife. Your pleasure and my silence are one. Nay, we wish the queen to have her say. I have nothing to say. A request, then? No request, my king. We wish it. Any entertainment is yours. Then perhaps I should like a story. Oh, storytellers we have. May the queen select her own storyteller. Indeed. The pharaoh has in his service one Horenrath, the captain of the guards. I would like him to amuse me with a story. Fetch him! Captain, the queen desires a story. A fierce tale of conquest. Of the capture of foreign armies by our ancestors. Of thousands tortured and made prisoner. Nefertiti, that doesn't sound like you. A story of the might of Egypt. I know of a might that is stronger than the sword. Yes? Then tell us it. Royal Pharaoh, Royal Queen, let me tell you of my dream. We want no dream. We wish reality. Now, for Tidy, hear him out. Go ahead, Captain. Since I was a boy, I have often had this dream of a time when the strength of Egypt will be met with an equal strength across the Nile. The only victor will be death. Our people in their misery will ransack the temples, the Nile will cease to flood, and the black earth remain red. And there will come a Messiah, a teacher of good, a preacher of peace, of healing words. And men shall say this Lord is the shepherd of all people. Is that all? And greed and murder and sin shall all disappear of the world but follows in this good shepherd's footsteps. Yes, Your Royal Highness, that is all. That is my dream. Captain, your story pleased us. What of Egypt? Its wealth? Its conquests? Your Highness, the story of turning the other cheek told by a soldier is the good way to begin your reign. Pray give it thought. I don't want to give it thought. Who are you, a mere captain of the guards, to be telling his queen what to think? I wish to be amused, not preached to. I asked for a tale of strength, a story of the greatness of the two Egypts, the hiss of the cobra, the scream of the vulture, and you have disobeyed me. My lord Pharaoh, what punishment does Horan Rab deserve? Punishment? But why? I say fifty lashes. I want this man whipped for disobeying his queen. But it's Horan, Rab. We all grew up together. I know who it is. Call the lash this instant. If I have to wait one more moment, it will be a hundred, not fifty. Forty-eight. Forty-nine. Fifty. Captain Horan, Rab, what do you see on my head? The royal diadem, Your Majesty. Describe it to me. Gold band signifying the two Egypts, and over the forehead the gold cobra of the north, and the gold vulture of the south. Remember that, Captain. I come from southern Egypt. I, your queen, am the vulture of the south. I expect always to be obeyed. Next time, keep your dreams of a messiah to yourself. Captain, you may leave us. Wait a moment, Captain. Captain. Your story has pleased us well. It pleased not me. You may go now, General Horanrab. Why did I do it? 
Why did I seek to have Horan Rab humbled before me? His story affected me also. There was wisdom in it. But I was determined to start my reign as queen by being obeyed. It was a test of strength between us. And I knew Horan Rab regarded it as such. That night, the festivities over, my husband and I were alone in the palace. Why did you punish Horan Rab with such vehemence so soon after receiving the crown? Why did you make him a general? Oh, I like him. He deserved it. He deserved the lashes as well. Nefertiti, I don't understand you. I've always liked Horan Rab, and I know you have also. A queen should be gracious and forgiving. Besides, there was truth in his story. I, I could feel it. I don't know. Perhaps I'm a creature of mood. He never flinched, did he? He never had. Did you notice that old scar on his cheek? Oh, Nefertiti. Fifty lashes for an old friend. Perhaps I ordered them as an example to you. Do you get pleasure out of hurting? He took his punishment and you rewarded him, making him general. So we are both satisfied. I'm not so sure. It seemed a strange behavior to me, but perhaps someday I shall understand you better. You are finding out I have a mind of my own. Yes. <laughs> but about some things I could never agree with you. Really? If I were to say it's late, dear husband, would you mind snapping out the light? About that, I would certainly agree. <laughs> Brother Brother, are you awake? Is that you? I Certainly I am Draw the curtains aside You see, brother Two lamps A board across my knee And I am designing a new dress for the queen When she is with child you always work this late at night? <laughs> I do my best designs when the palace is dark and all are asleep. And I'm sure you're glad this day is over, brother. Don't say brother too loudly. Nobody knows we're related. Ah, I keep forgetting. If I haven't congratulated you before, brother, I, I want to say the ceremonies went beautifully. The fruit of 19 years planning... Nineteen long years. Egypt is more precious to me than my life. And there's only one way for it to continue to be a diadem in the universe. And that is to be powerful. I'm in Hotep and his son Akhenaten, who is now Pharaoh. Our line of bent and broken reeds. Our family grows increased stronger and wiser. When Nefertiti was born... I solemnly swore to commingle our family with the kings of Egypt. Today's marriage is the first step. Oh, my dear brother, you make me very proud. Nefertiti will bear children, but that too is only a beginning. It is not enough. Now, what I am about to say to you, I could only reveal to a brother... It must be a blood secret between us. Oh, of course, of course. Akhenaten must die. Oh, are you saying... Yes. You understand me. I am. When the time is right, he must eat poisoned food or drink his death. That would leave Queen Nefertiti a, a widow. What then? What would you say, brother... If your son Hornrab were then to marry Nefertiti. My son. The pharaoh of both Egypt. My son. Yes. Hornrab, your son. Today he was made a general. He has always been brave and strong. Uh, brother I, we are embarking upon a perilous course. But the rewards at the end of the journey are infinite. The gods will honor us. I shall guard your secret, brother. It is no longer mine alone. It is 
hours. It was only some time later I learned of the plot upon the life of my husband. What was it? Fate? The gods? They have often said of me that my name Nefertiti meant the beautiful. Those who knew me best said it meant the revengeful. No, the pharaoh and his queen did not live happily ever after. Theirs was an exciting and precarious existence with enemies abroad and at home. Akhenaten and Nefertiti, 1,400 years before Christ, defied the temple priests, the holy men, and the old superstitions, and almost paid for their modern ideas with their lives. I shall be back shortly with a postscript. Today we have brought you, with all the accuracy that history provides, the first chapters of the lives of two of the youngest monarchs ever to rule great ancient Egypt. And being young and restless, distrustful of the old ways, they live to turn superstition into religion and the power of the few into glory for the many. This has been one part of a true continuing account we shall bring you over the next several days. Our cast included Tammy Grimes, Russell Horton, E.V. Juster, Robert Dryden, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now a preview of the next exciting drama in our five-part anthology of Egypt's Golden Age. Nothing but silence. Gods, all of you, listen to your son, Eknaten. There is no fierceness in me. I cannot order the lash. I cannot be cruel. I love Egypt, but I am not of the metal to whip her, to chain her. Guide me. Tell me, am I strong enough to lead Egypt? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.